Okay, so we have to talk about it. Um, I majorly fucked up. So this is Studio Build Update, episode number two. And this is not how I wanted to make this video at all. For those of you that are new, this might be your first time seeing something about the Studio Build. This will be my future recording studio. This project started in July of 2021. It is now November of 2022, and this is where we're at. Now, since the first episode of the Studio Build series, we've come a long, long way. The ceiling is framed. The rest of the framing here in the live room is done. We had our major, major structural issues solved, and it was all done by an incredible team of people, new friends of mine that came in and helped me when I desperately needed it. And I filmed the entire thing because a big part of this studio build process for me is documenting it and turning it into a studio build series. Now, when we started this project a little over a year ago, well, actually more than a year ago now, it's like a year and a half ago, we started off really, really strong. And my initial goal was to have this thing up and running by, well, certainly by this time, by fall of 2022. I didn't initially think that this would take over a year to even just get I mean, realistically, we're maybe halfway done. I, I don't even know at this point. Point is though, I didn't think it would take this long and be this difficult. But after our first build week, uh, which you can see in episode one of the series, we hit some major, major snags that needed to get uh, fixed and needed to be handled by professionals, i.e. structural engineers and a professional building crew and contractor that could come in and do some major surgery because this is my home and this is a home studio this needed to be done correctly. So I began the hunt for contractors, someone that could do this type of work, mainly installing two massive LVLs in the control room and building a temporary support wall to install the steel beam. And I couldn't find anybody. I had six different contractors, six different builders, all say they wanted to do the project. They would come down look at the space. And once they understood what we were actually trying to do here, i.e. not just build, another cookie cutter, you know, home theater basement kind of room, they all either ignored my phone calls, ghosted me, told me no, or gave me an absolute fuck you price that was just astronomical. Because the reality is we're trying to build a real studio down here. So there's things that we're building and taking into account and designing that a typical residential style contractor or builder just didn't really want to do. I mean, like for instance, these walls here, they're all offset on slight angles. And as soon as I started to describe that to these builders, their eyes would all glaze over and they realized that they weren't going to be able to turn and burn and make a ton of money on this project. So they all backed out. So we stalled for almost a year. And so all that led to me making a video. I did a Tuesday Q and A uh, where I answered the question, how's the studio build going? And I basically said terribly, and I laid all of this stuff out and there was a man who watched that video and sent me an email. That man's name is Shane Witte, and Shane is from Crofton, Kentucky, and Shane is a builder, and he runs a company. He owns a company called Full Measure Construction, and he's a fan of the channel, and he saw that I needed help, and he reached out. And to make a long, long story short, Shane Witte and his crew ended up being my saving grace. So Shane and his crew loaded up a trailer, they brought materials, they booked a hotel for a little over a week and they drove six hours down from Crofton, Kentucky to come help me out. It was a huge build week. We got so much accomplished and I felt this sense of relief and this sense that things were back on track and I would be able to start working down here, you know, in the, in the near future. I could see the light at the end of the tunnel. Cut to a couple of weeks later, it's time to start editing the video. I want to get the second part of this build series out and I start searching my hard drives and the footage is nowhere can't find the footage. Almost all of it is gone and it's my fault. I won't really bore you with the details um, other than to say that I'm an incredibly disorganized person. I have been my entire life. I, I can't help it. Uh, and when it comes to doing this for a living, making content, content creation, file management is a huge, huge thing. And I've been lucky until now. And the thing about Shane and, and Full Measure is those guys would have come down and helped me out and worked just as hard for just as long, whether there was a YouTube video, whether there was cameras involved or not, that, that's just who they are. Those are the types of, of people that they are, but it's not a total loss. There is some footage left over and I have to thank Chris Marks, my production assistant who you've seen on the channel before, 
uh, because the only footage that exists is the footage that Chris handled and Chris backed up and Chris saved and kept organized. Um, so I do have something to show you. It's a little bit, uh, and we have Chris Marks to thank for this, not me. So I will be able to introduce you to Shane and his crew. Uh, I will be able to show you a few key factors of where we're at, and then we'll come back and I will get you up to date on everything else that happened that we did and where we're at uh, and where we're going from here. Well, what's going on here now is we have to get this 12 inch LVL up and over a gas pipe right there, up and over copper pipes right there in between the two PVC pipes that have been removed. But once this gets up and over the gas pipe and in on top of that wall right there, then we should be able to fasten that one and there will be two more that will go side by side on that in between those sections of joist that's been cut out right there and that will replace this temporary support wall that we've built once it's all in and tied together I mean to be a smart ass Keon, but I'm pushing as hard as I can. How about come on way? But then I have another question. What, this one here? Yeah. yeah. Once you get the first one or two of these in here, this isn't it going to become increasingly difficult to get the next one? Well the last one will be a bitch. Yeah. No, no, no way to two ways about it. Unless, I mean, other options we got is I can kill the water and I can Cut these pipes, these copper pipes, and cap them. Hey, hey, hey. Alright, give her a show. There it is. Alright, now you see. Now it looks like you're almost cooking with gas. Yes, sir. I'm getting there. Put your purse down, Keon. <laughs> <laughs> Keon, I just want to say you're doing a great job, and we all believe you. Bullshit, ain't it, Keon? <laughs> Push it. Push it. Push it. Put your damn purse down and pull it. <laughs> I think it's hitting on the top. We're so close. That feels like I'm hitting something solid. All right. Oh, went right there, my arm into my arm too. All right, Shane, what uh, what happened? What are we doing? Well, what we had to do was due to size of the LVL and lack of space and presence of mechanical entities, we'll call it. Um, we had to cut out, this is a uh, drain line, four inch drain line, so we had to cut it out. And we thought we could get our LVN over the LVL in over the copper, but we thought wrong. We will now use the available space to work our LVL into there and get our other two in and then we will put all this back together like it never happened. There's something hitting somewhere. Probably a nail or something. Let me go. I mean, we're flush the wow. entire way until it gets to him. Until it gets to who? You. Yeah. So, start looking there. What's that right there? This floor is wavy. No. No way. That's exactly what it is. You can see where it goes from right here and then it waves up. Yeah. Let me get on one side and you get on the other. Uh -huh. That'd be great. Alright, so this is a big step. The first bits of the ceiling are finally going in here in the live room. job on y'all's part so I love how that looks everything is straight everything is equal it is supported as it should be and I know the, the amount of work that goes into this stuff so to come up with those results that's fantastic all right let's get that dude up in there I'll go take care of the structural stuff get it here so we can completely finish it today get joist hangers on we're gonna teach Kyler how to do that get him going on that 
three, y'all are gonna carry on to the next one right there. But we're gonna get this joker in, we're gonna keep moving. All right, so today is a very, very big, big day. Shane and the Full Measure crew are finishing up the LVLs in the control room. And so those temporary walls are gonna come down today, which I'm incredibly excited about. And right now, at the same time that that's happening, we've got the steel beam crew coming in. They're in the middle of taking out the original wood beam and the poles, and that giant steel beam is about to come down through the back of the house and get hung, which I'm actually incredibly excited to see because I don't know how they're going to do that thing, man. I was just out there looking at it on the truck, and it's, it's, it's big. <laughs> it's really big. Hopefully, fingers crossed, by the end of today, for the first time, we will be able to see this space completely open with no poles, no temporary walls, no temporary walls in the control room, and I'll get to see the skeleton of my studio for the first time. All right, gentlemen, how's it going in here? It's going pretty well. That's the last, uh, the last LVL, yeah? Yes, sir. The very last one. Look at that. Turn it here, sir. Uh, yeah, start turning it yeah. Come on a little bit. Come on a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Alright fellas, let's do it. Alright. Alright. Good. Come on. That's good. Alright. Slide that rack over. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's hardwood floor. Don't mess that floor up. Yeah. 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 We're gonna go bottom of the pipe right there. Yep. We're gonna taper it back up. Yep. We're gonna make bottom of the LVL ceiling height here. Yep. Use it as a transition. Go back to the wall there. We're gonna build our chase down. Yes, sir. Ample room for diffuser. Yes, sir. We're gonna block the chase off right here at the end of the wall. Right. Double wall there as well. No, this is gonna be a single, single. wall because it's underground. It's but concrete. we will frame another wall in front. Or are you just yes. going to leave it as is? No, no, no. We're going to frame a wall. Yeah. Okay. We're going to frame a wall. Absolutely. All right. Awesome. Um, and and with that wall, we want to keep it probably pretty tight to here. We don't want it to touch, but probably right. this is going to dictate yeah. this little, you yeah. know. We'll, we'll be able to get the back edge to right. that curve. That's, that's, that's kind of what I'm seeing. Yeah. Yeah. And, then, and then from there, you know, yeah. stuff it out. Right. All I ask, especially with the windows, but the doors as well, because it, all the jams and frames are two piece right. gasket in the middle yeah they need to fit together like a like a glove not as glass is going in them etc and so just you know pay a little extra care oh, and yeah. make sure that that's just on the yeah mark. that's fine we'll, we'll take know. care of that as a matter of fact i'll probably start measuring the opening and okay. building the headers okay. and that kind of thing okay. that way all these guys got to do is put it together put it in th this header goes there let's do it and let's keep rocking right. if we need to grow ourselves a little bit this way on this wall. Okay. I'm fine with that. In fact, it might be conducive for us, but only a little bit because right. the consoles we're trying to fit in here are already kind of just by the hair on their chinny right. chin chin. Jimmy and I are doing the ceiling line currently in the tracking room and we've devised a little bit of a plan. So uh, do you want to walk them through what we've done so far? Sure, and let's, where just we're heading? Start. let's just do it like we're doing it. Okay. We have, as almost every basement studio space has, some ceiling line anomalies that we're having to deal with. And we're also trying to keep as much height in here as we can. And some of it is really, really good. And some of it, well, we're having to do the best we can because there's stuff, there's stuff there we have to work on. And so we started back here. 
And what we've got here is a pretty, you know, the maximum ceiling height we can possibly squeeze out of this room. This may wind up being a drum tracking area or one of the drum tracking areas in the room. So obviously we want to keep as much height as we can. And then here we have a, a beam that we had, you know, holds the house up. So it's going to be there and a bunch of plumbing that we have to work around. So we've built soffits here. And then from there, we have angled this ceiling. We're going to do this, which is also low. We're going to have to work with it as best we can. So we're trying to, you know, lay out how to do it today, make it all fit and also not lose any, any height whatsoever. And we've devised a pretty cool plan, I think. So as we put it in, in action tomorrow, we'll see how cool it really is. So it seems as though our, what we're going to do is run this 10 foot span uh, under all of this HVAC work by going flat against this beam and running that all the way across. And then once we get to the other side of the steel beam, we're going to basically create a band. We're going to send a two by four band all the way parallel with the uh, steel beam that'll be attached to the floor joists accordingly. And then we will attach that side to here and then run a slight angle from here up to there. So we'll have another non-parallel wall. Is that generally yeah, it? That's about, about it. Okay. Well, now we got to do it. Damon, Keon, what are y'all doing? We're building this wall so uh, we can raise up the ceiling a little bit up here because the beam goes up and we're uh, have a little more trying space. Trying to get all the ceiling space we can get. Yeah. And then y'all are going to put me a closet in here. Closet, doors, and shelves. Yeah, this will be like a mic locker, I think, because there's no storage down here as of right now. So trying to take advantage of what we can where we can get it. Try not to shoot one of these into that beam. Yeah, that would uh, be a bad day. Probably. Okay, so back to today. Now I'm really glad that I have the actual footage that I do because those are some pretty key elements of the build that luckily, um, thanks to Chris, we were able to preserve and show you guys. So let me actually show you what the final product looks like. And so this is it. This is the LVL that went in. Now I have to admit, I watched them do this in real time and I'm really not even sure how they got it done. This project by itself took them four days of the seven that they were here total, but uh, they got it done and it's done to specification as the structural engineer wanted it. After we got that done, we were able to finish the ceiling line in here. It's kind of hard to tell on camera, but I'm standing back in front of the window here. We have a slight angle right above where the mix position will be. And then it drops down flat, goes under the LVL, and then it picks up. And uh, we've got another slight angle going towards the back of the room. Now, yes, I know this wall is crooked. This is not done. We have to frame in a soffit once the HVAC work is done. Uh, this is going to be the rack. Uh, this piece of furniture will not stay here long term, but we've sized out this framing for a uh, two space floor to ceiling rack unit uh, that will have all of my outboard gear, my computer, everything electronic will live in there. And we are going to cool it. We have plans to run an air supply duct right over the rack to cool it. And then back here in the vocal booth, we got the rest of the framing done. So there's now double walls between the vocal booth, double door jams. The vocal booth itself is completely framed and ready for electrical. And speaking of electrical, that is the next step. That's the next major thing that needs to happen down here, the next hurdle. My goal is by the end of the year, I wanna have this place wired up for electricity. Now we've got a whole plan on that and I'm gonna make that section part of the next video in the build series. Once electrical is done, we'll have power and then we'll have lighting down. And then it's time to finish the HVAC work, which has been another huge hurdle uh, in this build process. Now, luckily there's been another major breakthrough on that front, which I'll be happy to show you in the next video part as well. But once electrical 
and heating and air are done, then we will go on to what we're calling low voltage. We actually have to wire the studio up. And that means running microphone tie lines. That means running network cabling. That means running coax cable for video. The goal for this studio is to be a multi-purpose music and video production space. I wanna be able to have full band live streams down here. I wanna be able to cut live performance music videos down here. Uh, I wanna be able to make records down here and basically future-proof this space for any future ideas that I might have. And so what that means is we're actually gonna wire the studio up ourselves while all of the walls are open because we can run all of our microphone tie lines, we can run our network cabling, we can run our coax um, SDI cabling for the cameras, and we're gonna have custom wall plates mounted. It's a whole thing. You will see that hopefully um, early, early next year. But all that aside, the fact of the matter is because of Shane and the crew at Full Measure, we were able to cross a major hurdle that held this project up for almost a year, the structural work. In fact, I'm standing under the steel beam right now. So in terms of timeline, when the studio is actually gonna be completed, a large part of that is gonna come down to when I can afford to pay people to come in. Because at this point, with the exception of the low voltage, all of the next major steps, electrical, HVAC, need to be done by professionals. But once that stuff is done and we've got insulation and drywall done, the plan is to bring Jimmy and Shane and the Full Measure crew back, hopefully spring of next year, and do all the finishing work. And that's when the studio will start to become a studio. That's when we start putting glass in, we start putting doors in, we start to treat the room and tune the room. So for all of you that were asking, that's the update on the studio build. That's what happened. Uh, and I think that we were able to sort of make lemonade out of lemons with this whole situation. It could have been a lot worse, but I still feel terrible about what happened. I mean, there's, there's a ton of amazing moments that were captured that we don't have. Sentimental stuff that, that matters to me. Like actually this, check this out. I wasn't planning on showing this, but everybody that has worked on the studio so far, I'm having sign the header above the control room window. And so there you can see the names of Shane and the Full Measure crew and Jimmy and other friends of mine that have been down here to help out so far. Now, I want to take a second to say thank you to Shane and to Kyler, Keon, Ethan, and Damon, uh, the crew from Full Measure. I cannot thank those guys enough. I will have Full Measure's website linked in the description box down below. I have been recommending these guys to friends of mine around town. If you need work done, if you need a space built, uh, especially with the intent on it being a creative space or a studio space or a space that just sounds good and is well built, I cannot recommend these guys enough. I also wanna thank my friend and our studio designer, Jimmy Bird. I mean, he flies across country to come out here for weeks at a time to help me build the studio and literally could not be doing this without him. But most importantly, I wanna thank you guys, the audience. Without you, I wouldn't be doing any of this. And this has been a dream of mine for a really, really long time that because of you guys watching these videos and subscribing to this channel, I'm able to do, so thank you. If you would like to support the build of this studio by video course. Uh, they're linked in the description box down below. That's the best way that you can support this channel other than liking and subscribing. We have a brand new video course coming out. Uh, Pre-orders will start next week. It's the Fretboard Fundamentals lead guitar course. It's called Crafting Tasteful Solos. We've been working on it behind the scenes really, really hard. So if you want, you can check out my video courses via the description box down below or sign up for the inner circle down there as well. As always, thank you so much for watching. My name is Rhett Scholl and remember there is no plan B. Well, actually this video kind of was a plan B, so maybe there is sometimes, I don't know.